Harvard University Press's The Black Book of Communism, published in 1994, attributes over 100 million deaths worldwide to the ideology. In more recent research, places the number even higher. In every country communism gains power, authoritarianism and death followed in its wake. As an investigative journalist, I want to understand why. Karl Marx and Frederick Engels set forth in the Communist Manifesto an ideology of struggle that in their own words abolishes all religion and all morality. It viewed the world from the lens of what Marx coined dialectical materialism, which was the absolute idea that development occurs as a result of struggle and life is nothing more than matter. If human existence is reduced to only matter, then life becomes expendable for the so-called greater good under communist doctrine, except that the communist definition of good runs counter to what normal people understand as universal good. For example, I think most sane people would agree that famine, suffering, and genocide are bad, but to communist leaders, they've been reframed as successes or even as necessary for the so-called greater good. When Lenin assumed power in 1917, tens of thousands were arrested for opposing the regime, and many were tortured and executed en masse. Lenin's strategy was to eliminate, by legal or physical means, any challenge or resistance, even if passive, to their absolute power. By forbidding private property, peasants throughout Russia had their food, farming tools, and even seeds confiscated. Unable to farm, a man-made famine swept through Russia in 1921 and 1922, killing an estimated 5 to 10 million people. The very peasants that communism was supposed to benefit instead starved to death under its rule. According to the Black Book of Communism, Lenin was overjoyed, saying that famine would have numerous positive results. Since, he said, famine would destroy faith not only in the Tsar, but in God too. Following Lenin's death in 1924, Stalin's 29-year reign further bloodied Russia. More famines and purges would occur. In Ukraine, 7 to 10 million people were killed, according to the United Nations estimate published in November 2003. In Kazakhstan, an estimated 1.5 million people were starved. Like Lenin, Stalin also counted the famines as a success he killed an estimated 60 to 66 million people. And the deaths under Mao Zedong of the Chinese Communist Party may have been even higher. Starting 1958, the Great Leap Forward created yet another man-made famine that killed an estimated 45 million people within four years. Under both Stalin and Mao, historians have records of people who, desperate for survival, resorted to cannibalism. When conditions are that barbaric, people are forced to either die or to betray their own morals just to survive. And after violating their own morals, guilt, self-loathing, and all that makes a person psychologically vulnerable begin to dominate. To protect the psyche, people will sometimes tell themselves they made the right decision, that morality is relative, that everything is just matter, and that the communist worldview is correct. What the constant barrage of public executions, suffering, trauma, and madness does is leave people so afraid, shocked, or apathetic and numb that nobody can think straight anymore. A key goal of communism is to erase pre-existing morals. That way, communism can displace traditional morals with its own code of ethics, or rather, its absence of ethics. Their code demands only obedience to the party above basic humanity. The party dictates what is right and wrong, and anything that challenges it is deemed wrong. So under communism, morality, faith, and tradition are all targets for destruction. But under it, famine is right, struggle is right, and violence is right when they serve the party. Mao's Cultural Revolution in the 1960s saw children beating their own parents. Teachers, landlords, and intellectuals were hunted and publicly humiliated, or worse, by Mao's militant group, the Red Guard. Mao ended up killing between 50 million and 70 million people. 
Deaths elsewhere haven't been fully counted, but are placed at 1 million in Vietnam, 2 million in Cambodia, 1.7 million in Africa, 1.5 million in Afghanistan, 1 million in Eastern Europe, 150,000 in Latin America, and even more in other places where communism touched. Communism promises a world without suffering, and yet, in its execution, does the exact opposite. Is this a tragic case of the road to hell being paved by good intentions, or were the intentions bad from the get-go? Before he was the founder of communism, Karl Marx wrote many publications in his early years. In his early poem, Invocation of One in Despair, he wrote, So a god has snatched from me my all. Nothing but revenge is left to me. This theme of revenge continues. In his 1839 play, Alanem, believed to be Emmanuel, an alternative name for God pronounced backwards and with each pair of letters inverted, the character in the play seeks to destroy not only himself, but the world along with him. In his 1841 poem, The Player, or The Fiddler, Marx writes, Look now, my blood-dark sword shall stab unerringly within thy soul. God neither knows nor honors art. The hellish vapors rise and fill the brain, till I go mad and my heart is utterly changed. And he also writes, See this sword? The prince of darkness sold it to me. And quote, With Satan I have struck my deal. He chalks the signs, beats the time for me. I play the death march fast and free. Marx had a dark fixation with death, destruction, and revenge. And it's only fitting that his manifesto would create a system that achieved exactly these. Communism capitalized on humankind's desire for a higher purpose, and did so by destroying religion and placing itself at the helm instead. In an imagined communist state, the government controls everything, all matters public and private. People are all reduced to matter, cogs in a machine, and his employees are assets within a soulless collective. Communism is a belief built up from the destruction of belief, and a morality built on the destruction of morality. It is a dead-end ideology built on struggle, hatred, and destruction.